So this is what I call a tabletop review. My longtime TMPers know this, but perhaps you're new to the Nut and Fancy project, the original Gear Adventure channel, in operation for about seven years now. Thanks for watching the video. But in these tabletop reviews, we have fun. We're going to talk philosophy. We're going to get a little ridiculous at times. <laughs> We will talk about the specifics, the pros and cons of the pistol on the table, the outstanding, that's right, outstanding Walther PPS. But first, here's your intro. I hope you like it. I always do an intro, right? Among other things, I'm known as a completely independent gun reviewer. I've been doing it a long time here in video form in YouTube. Who knows what the future holds, but that's what I've been doing it for for a long time. The format works. The hosting of Google YouTube works for me. I'm grateful for it. We are able to disseminate some great information, connect with one another over gear we like that suits our philosophies of use. We'll talk about that in the, the video. But the independent part is very important to me as a reviewer because I think the best quality of information results because of that. I'm not tied to any manufacturer, as my longtime subscribers, TMPers, know, any other media source, whether it's television, which have tried to get me to come on their shows and stuff. TMPers know those stories. Other YouTube channels, magazines, whatever. I just do my own thing. I generate my own data. I don't have to find out what other people are saying about a gear item. I just do it right or wrong. You get a, a fresh data point that way. And that's honestly what I tried to generate. The reason I say this is because here in early 2014 when I'm doing this actually update video on the PPS, the talk of the town is the new Remington R51 9mm subcompact carry pistol, which could be outstanding. I haven't shot it yet. I haven't even handled it yet, but it's an interesting, let's say, footnote on how the entire industry and particularly the gun media works. Early on with the introduction of a gun, there will develop a groupthink. Perhaps it comes out in a magazine article and someone proclaims this is the best thing in the world. And then lo and behold, for other people to gain cool points, views, audience, they're going to trumpet those same thoughts and on and on it will go. Again, the R51 could be outstanding. I like what I see so far in preliminary research. It could be very cool. But I read an article... <laughs> In, the, in a magazine, which will remain nameless. I don't want to make them look bad. But it just made me laugh. And my son, Tactical Doodle, and I, we talk about this all the time, of how ridiculous some of the magazine articles are on guns. And they so many start out something like this. Like, well, I had my doubts about this gun. There's no way I thought it would be good. I had preconceived notions. And I'm happy to report, man, I was wrong. This thing is awesome. And then I turn two pages later and I see a full page display ad from the manufacturer who's buying advertising space in that magazine. PPS. Now don't get me wrong, you can still get good information from these magazines. I peruse them once in a while just for fun. A lot less now that I do a TMP, but occasionally I'll just bounce in it. And I bounced into one on the R51. And that's what the guy's saying. He's like, oh, you know, and this is what really kind of irritated me, okay, to be dead honest. He goes, yeah, the pocket pistols that I've shot all sucked. The trigger sucked. You know, I can never hit anything with them. My shot times are slow with them. And I'm reading this intro and I'm like, dude, are you freaking kidding me? How can you say that? With the pistols we have available, the shield, I just reviewed that. We'll re reference these as if, you know, the review continues. The XDS, the SIG 938. 238, I mean that's a 380. The Caltech PF9, the car series of pistols, and that and you, out of all those, you say they all suck, that they've never suited you. I just think it's disingenuous. And why? Because oh now something new has come. And now we have to trump that as the you know the great newest thing. In this case, and I am kind of picking on the R51. Again, I may love it, I may do a rave review on it if and when I do a review on it. I'm not part of the freaking launch media, I don't care. But then in the next paragraph he goes, well, I'm happy to say that it blew away all my, my preconceived notions. And he said something along these lines. He goes, 
and it is a game changer. <laughs> It's a game changer. There's so many magazine articles that go like that. Why? Because it's a new, the newest subcompact 9mm. That's the game changer. What about the PPS? I mean, where have you been? Have you shot the gun? The, the fact is, a game changer, to me, would be, let's see, uh, a 9-ounce, high-intensity, beam-inducted, nitric acid vapor pistol weighing about 10 ounces with a one-month duration in a 40 watt power range yeah that would be a game changer oh we can't get that advanced okay how about we have a 10 ounce 15 shot 9 millimeter of carbon fiber that shoots one inch group at 25 yards that would be a game changer we're not there yet but we have some some great pistols on the market now, if you're like me and you like to be armed at all times, whether you're a responsible civilian, a for Constitution law enforcement officer, not anti-Constitution, not one of these guys that Dude, gleefully just... participate in roadblocks and gun bans. I don't care about those guys. I, I want nothing to do with helping them and their gear system. Sorry, there's a mini rant. But if you're FCLE and you are armed and you have a need for a subcompact pistol, by the way, you should probably be familiar with my best you know subcompact carry pistols playlist that i just made i think about two months ago go on my main page hit the about button from here, from here, and you will Andrew, see Matt not the about it's uh, somewhere there playlist freaking youtube change in every six months it seems like and i'll put a link either in the sidebar or somewhere and you can click on it but in that playlist is i'm putting in these hall of fame carry pistols I don't know why it took me so long to do it. It just dawned on me two months ago. I was like, I don't have a playlist for this. In that playlist, if you like the way I do gun reviews, you like my data point to help you in your purchase process or just to make you feel good about the gun you have, check it out. And getting to the pistols in that playlist, that's why these gun magazine articles are so ridiculous to me. For that matter, any media. It might be another YouTube channel. Say, oh, this is the best. It blows away everything else. Because we have such outstanding carry pistols available. And they've been here a long time. Let's get back to the Walther PPS and get on track. Now you might be saying, hey, nothing fancy. Why did you take so long to review the Walther PPS? So glad you asked that question. Here's why. Because I did. Aha! Gotcha! It was actually one of the very first subcompact pistols I reviewed. Did you know that? Walther PPS flat carry 9mm posted January 2009 here in the Nut and Fancy Project. Right there, bro. It was a preliminary tabletop review. It was 17 minutes long, and I pretty much will echo a lot of the same things I said in that review. However, at the time, I did not have trigger time on the Walther PPS. And there were some criticisms I posted, or I directed to the gun. One was cost. Now, longtime TMPers who've been here a long time, love those guys. And I love everybody who subscribes and supports me. Even new folks, if you're just subscribing now, hit that button, by the way. Subscribe. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Awesome. You guys motivate me. But you may know that, you know, in that review, I was like, yeah, it's expensive. And it still is, by the way. And I wasn't too stoked back in 2009 about expensive polymer pistols, and I said as much. That's because, you know, you had other options and still do like the Caltech PF9, which are much less expensive, $250. Car series is up there, the PM series. But that was a minor criticism. I've changed, though, over the years. And remember, every video I post is a snapshot in time. I'm always open to learning changing my opinions, developing my school of thought as things go on. And one thing I've been more open to is more expensive carry pistols because I've shot such good ones, like the SIG 938. And so if I post a rave review about the SIG 938 and then I come back to the PPS and I go, well, it's too expensive, I feel in some ways that's a little bit hypocritical because we're talking about performance. You might throw in second kind of cool there as well, but mostly we're talking about performance, carryability, comfort, all the things I'm going to try to hit here. You're going to see I've changed on that, though. I'm more accepting of the increased weight versus firepower equation that the Walther PPS represents because I've reviewed other guns. Na, 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 
that are just like that too that I've raved about. When I posted that review back in 2009, I really wasn't happy with it. You know, I was like, ah, you know, this, this is a great gun. I, I want something better, and that's why I'm redoing it. So the, the you know, the long answer to a short question is I'm, I did review it. This is an updated review because the pistol deserves it. It is a Hall of Famer. There's actually three pistols I'm equally excited about that have recently been posted to the best concealed carry pistol playlist. I've shown the other two already, the Shield and the XDS. And then the trilogy is complete with the PPS. Come on, baby. All three of these are highly recommended. If you ask me which one is better than the other, you're going to have to decide and watch the video reviews. Watch the results. You decide. I would be happy with any of these guns. They are all equally awesome. Now, they're not game changers. <laughs> to, to use that overplayed and honestly ridiculous phrase at this point, just because it's been so overused and misused. misused. Because a game changer would be a gun like the PPS that weighs equal to a PF9 by Keltec. PF9 still sets standards. It's a 13 ounce 9mm. There's downsides to that. It's more snappy to shoot. I've talked about that a lot. Let's get on it. POU. You're, you'll Nine like this discussion. 10. Okay, we're talking philosophy of use. Application of the gun. Obviously concealed carry, right? I don't spend too much time on this. We already in, mentioned it in the intro. You want to be armed. You should be armed as a concealed carry permit holder. Maybe if you choose to carry anyhow, that's your option. You might stop an active shooting situation someday, just like dude did in Oregon with his Glock. Prevented a loss of life that day. A civilian. So you get it. If you're watching this video, you don't need to be preached to. You already know concealed carry is a very important part of a safe and secure free society. I fully support it. Join the NRA. Give generously to NRA ILA because those rights are always being sought to be taken from you by the Democrats, by the progressives. Bang. Sorry. That's just the way it is. So concealed carry. How about home defense? It does have a rail. You can integrate a light. Yeah, I prefer a larger gun. One with more rounds, maybe a bigger caliber. This does come in 40, does come in 9. Home defense, you could. If you only get one gun, could you use this home defense? Absolutely. You know, dudes are out there using J-frames for home defense. They don't have light, and they've served for decades very reliably. So you get it. Home defense, absolutely. Here's one that I'd really like to see happen. <laughs> and this is a pop culture reference. James Bond. Okay, this is a pet peeve. I watch a James Bond movie, and Daniel Craig is an excellent James Bond. He really is. Never mind his politics, which I think kind of lean towards the anti-gun side. Oh my gosh, what's up with that? Yeah. But apparently the fans did not like when they switched to, what was it, the Walter P99? And so they said, no, we got to go back to the PPK, and there are all types. I, did they circulate a petition? Whatever. And then the latest one, Skyfall, he's making these 100-yard shots with a Walther PPQ, which is, not PPQ, but PPK, with an extremely underpowered, as I've said here in TMP, 380. Yeah, I know it's James Bond, but for crying out loud, dude, he's shooting on that guy at the ladder as he's climbing up the ladder 100 yards away, and the guy's scared, and he stops. At 100 yards, a 380 is nothing more than nuisance fire, says me. I mean, what I would like the James Bond, you know, movie uh, genre to do is, you know, use something more modern. The P99 was an excellent choice. I think the PPQ would be the best choice if you, for whatever reason, have to go subcompact. It has to be a pocket pistol. Dude, PPS. This would be a much better James Bond option. Walther PPS, flat, sexy, capable. Yeah, maybe, maybe one day. I don't know, ranting complete on the James Bond. But PPK, come on, I love the PPK. Go watch my review. But I'm just saying, for a secret agent going against AKs and he's shooting a 380, six plus one 380, no. Next, motorcycle gun, dudes. Uh, I haven't really shown you yet. I'm a big motorcyclist. I don't know if you know that. I am. I have a tank bag, and I always have a gun in the tank bag. Well, not always. When it's legal, I have a tank 
I have a gun bag. I should say I have a, a tank in the tank bag. That'd be funnier. I wish. Leopard tank. Now I have a, you know, a pistol like this, and the PPS would be a perfect pistol. It's flat, relatively lightweight. We'll talk in competitive options, other guns, which I think suit that role. I don't want bit, something big that takes up a lot of space. It can't do it. The only time I would deviate from that formula is if I'm going to a place where I think uh, bears would be a problem, which is going to be very remote on a motorcycle. But I'm just saying, maybe I'd upgrade to a Glock 20. Glock 21 in that situation. Go watch my reviews on those guns. Awesome. How about a backup, please, for the FCLE guys? Or if you think you need to have to carry too deep as a, you know, as a civilian, backup piece for a civilian. I don't, by the way, recommend that. Hey, I carry two guns. Why? Well, in case one goes down, I'm like, well, first off, as a civilian, the op, you know, the likelihood of you getting in an armed conflict, if you're paying attention and being smart, is so remote. You know, ah, I just don't. And if you have a reliable primary piece, I don't think you need a backup piece. Now, if you go into WROL or something like that, where the, the possibility of armed conflict goes much higher, maybe I could see it. If you're a special operations guy, we're getting in the military side, yeah, I could see it. But this is too big as a backup piece for me personally. I would go with a Beretta 950 Jetfire. No longer manufactured. That to me is the perfect backup piece. So tiny. Freaking nine shots. Yeah, it's 25 auto, but it's a backup piece. It's going to be within arm's length. The guy is close to you if you're using that gun. POU discussion complete. Size, width, weight, balance, and feel. It's not super light, the Walther PPS. I think that I said that back in 2009. It's 22 ounces with a magazine in empty. Keep in mind, the Glock 26, Glock 27 are still standards of measure in terms of firepower and weight. They're about the same weight, and yet they have superior firepower than all three guns I've shown you to this point. They are Hall of Famers. The advantage of the PPS, and from that, for that matter, the other slim nines I've shown you, is this is about 0.91 inches at the slide, 6.3 inches in overall length. You know a gun I often confuse this with? And I know because I was testing these are together, is the freaking XDS. I, I mean, these two guns would be on the tailgate, We'd be doing runs. And I would pick up the XDS thinking that it's the XD or the PPS. And I just was constantly confusing the guns. Imagine that. Both polymer, flat. They look very similar to me. This one is a little bit thicker. Very slightly. 0.95 inches in thickness. Same overall length. They're almost identical. The bounce is amazing. It seems flat. Visually, and this is something I noticed back in 2009, the XDS looks like it's broader. It looks like it's kind of a high gun, doesn't it? I think that's a visual illusion because you have a flat surface here and a flat surface here. Because if you compare it again against the XDS, you'll see, relatively speaking, they're very similar once again in height. Let's do them this way right here. So... I think it's a visual illusion. So you might look at the PPS, and I hope I'm not screwing the designations up with so many letters it happens. But it's wrong. Don't believe it. This gun is very portable, very slim, and I want people to remember it. This is a design that has survived. It is a great design. It survived the test of, the, I can't speak, test of time. It has survived a lot of competition. It's time to remind the world about it with Hopefully, a high-quality review. That's what I'm attempting to do now. How about firepower? If there's any negative thing I can see about... And there's a couple negatives I'm going to say about this gun. One is that it is down around versus its competition. The standard for a single-stack 9mm, at least, is going to be 7 plus 1. If you can get an 8 plus 1, that's awesome. But a 7 plus 1 is standard. This is a 6 plus 1. The PPS with the flush fitting magazine. Two other magazines on the table. This will be the seven, this will be the eight. And just for your reference, I'll show you how that looks. And instantly, it's so easy to put the magazine in wrong because this looks like, at least to me, that the finger rests is like that. If I'm not paying attention, <laughs> it happens. Yeah, I screw it up, but it goes in like that, obviously. And it, it's a much more comfortable gripping service. We'll talk about Ergos here in a second. But there's your eight-round magazine. Available. 
Hey, Nut, would you carry that around, the 8? No, I like flush fitting normally. I, normally, this is probably just to get the extra rest. There I go again. See, that looks like a finger rest. It's mainly, mainly this magazine. So the magazine goes like this. So many guns. So many personalities of each gun. This would probably be my preferred carry magazine because now I've got 7 plus 1, 8 rounds total. The magazines are high quality. Imagine that coming from Walther. They should be. I don't know who puts these together. Probably Metgar, made in Italy. Just super high quality. Easily dis disassembled with a magazine floor plate. I didn't really do a lot of dropping them uh, on drills on the concrete floor. If you do that a lot, you can break your magazine plates. They work fine. Great magazines, and like all magazines, for all these pistols, they're expensive. Wish there was some way around that. Apparently not. If you choose a 40 Walther PPS, you're going to be down even another round, so it's going to be 5 plus 1 with a flush mount magazine, and then, you know, on up the list. I recommend the 9. With proper loads, good marksmanship, it'll get the job done. It's very size efficient. But it is down around. That's firepower. And by the way, before I leave that, I mean, guys might ask, is that a huge deal to you? Um, no, not really, just because the gun excels in so many other ways. It's easily reloaded. I am bi I'm, a, I'm big on firepower. I want maximum rounds when we're talking about a serious purpose like this, but there's my answer. How about accuracy? I don't have a ton of targets to show you. Couple. Couple. We did a lot of drills with the PPS in a short amount of time because I had to play catch up. And one of the drills we did was eight rounds. Uh, well, I guess this is an accuracy drill here. So that's Blazer, 115 grain jacket, a hollow point. That's me shooting, I think. That's excellent. You know, that's basically one ragged hole, but eight yards. And if there's, here comes the other criticism I want to say. If there's one thing I did not like or do not like about the PPS, it's going to be the sights. There's just too much freaking air in them. See that? I said that about the otherwise outstanding Walther PPQ. It is a Walther attribute. And what we really need is the aftermarket guys to catch up with this pistol. I would like to see Heine come out with their straight eights on this gun. If you had a set of straight eight, you know, or Tridge sights, Tridium sights, dude, in business. In business. With the. Speaking of accuracy, a lot of what we did was practical on steel combat style drills, like Bad and myself did them. And part of what we noticed is that because you have so much air in the sights, to hit that long range plate that we were attempting at 60 yards, it was like a mini Ipsic plate. I mean, we were probably about, I was probably about 50% on it, which isn't excellent. Hard shot, we're running, our heart rate's up, but still, I think the sights are to blame. There's a lot of air in them. You know, is it quicker to acquire? Better for like this, a speed drill? This is a speed drill at 8 yards. Maybe. Here comes rapid fire from the XDS just by way of representation. And I raved about that gun. It's trigger, although it's not super light. Trigger on the XCX, I, XDS is, I think, 7 pounds, 14 ounces. The one on this, the Walther PPS, is much better i really love the trigger it has a short reset at 6.1 pounds on my electronic trigger pull scale check out this we're still talking accuracy believe it or not blazer 115 grain jacket of hollow point i love that round that's aluminum i think that's aluminum case man i wish cci would keep making that standard pressure one whole groups basically standing it's tough to do you know that Another group there. Outstanding accuracy from this gun. I mean, it is so accurate. The Walther PPS. It is accurate as as is good your marksmanship. Three rounds, one hole. This is 124 grain blazer brass. Right there. Right there. Right there. And right there. Last, definitely not least, Federal. 115 grain FMJ. I don't have any long distance targets. This is only at six yards. Sorry if that makes you sad. And we'll end with this. Check that. I popped nine rounds into that sucker. Oh, wait. That's not me. I can't even claim it. It's Tactical Doodle. My son did it. Making Daddy so proud. Accuracy is phenomenal. On par with any of the other guns that I've recently reviewed. The Trilogy. How about ergonomics? 
Well, let's go back to that flatness. It's just such an important attribute to a carry pistol. Says so me. Other guys may disagree. They go, well, I don't care. I carry Glock 21. Holy hey, if you God. carry it consistently Dude. and you're a good person, I say rock on. What do you mean if you're a good person? Well, if you're a bad person, I don't want you carrying it all. <laughs> That's what I mean. Hey, if you want to carry a fat gun, carry a fat gun. You want to carry a freaking Smith & Wesson TRR-8 with an eight-round cylinder, rock on, man. Generally speaking, most folks will not go out the door and carry consistently in their system unless it's going to be comfortable. I've said that a bazillion times. The Walther PPS is extremely comfortable. This is another gun you will forget you have on your person. Maybe the 22-ounce weight isn't awesome. It's not standard setting. It's not a game changer. Again, 13 ounces would be. 10 ounces even better. But it's comfortable enough. It'll disappear. We'll talk about some carry options here when we get to accessories. It's flat, though. I love that. You may say, well, is it so flat it's uncomfortable to shoot? Answer is no. It's not. Not to me. You have an interchangeable backstrap here. This is the standard one. On the table, you've been looking at the fat one. We tested it with this. So Tactical Dude will put that on. I didn't even know he'd done it, and so I conducted all the testing with this, and it's fine. My hands are a large size. Great. I think it looks better with this one for smaller size, medium size hands. Maybe that's the best option. It's real quick to change. Not a problem. It's just a button you press right there. You can slide it out, snap it in. Manual will step you through if you get lost. The gun doesn't function with the back strap out. That's pretty standard for most issues. I never saw any reliability problems with the back strap. I never saw it dropping. None of that stuff. There's a stippling. Pretty much aesthetic only. You could put something on here like a grip, that synthetic suede, which I love. I don't think decal grip makes anything for this, which again makes me sad. A little bit undercut in the molding of the polymer frame, which you can get a high grip on. Looking at the magazine well there. No real fun link going on there. Notice, by the way, when you put this in, if your hand is here, just like some of the other designs, you're going to pinch your hand. Been there, done it. Watch out for that. Yeah, how about that mag release, nothing? I don't mind it. Okay, it's like Walther PPQ M1 style, so you can release it with your index finger. Come up here, release it with your thumb. At this point, I, I'm used to it because I've shot it enough in various platforms to include H and K. Don't mind it. So I don't feel like I have to have it here. I mean, it's, it's a proven system. Works good. It's positive. It's fully ambidextrous. I like that. Great trigger guard. No rubbing issues here. Somewhat flattened here. I wish it was a little bit more, but you can put some skateboard tape here. I rest my offhand, like you guys know. Trigger, 6.1 pounds. Just excellent. Listen. Crisp. Can't really demonstrate, you know, the full shooting dynamic here, obvi obviously, but I love the trigger on the PPS. That is a Walther strong suit. We saw it in the PPQ as well. For, for that matter, the PPE or the P99 as well. So many P's. Dang. Accessory rail. Uh, in a subcompact, I generally don't use it. You could slam a laser on it if you want. I would like you to be a better marksman and not rely on a laser. I think the big advantage, like I said before, of a laser is intimidation factor. You know, a bad guy sees a laser bouncing on his chest, or if he doesn't, you could kindly point it out to him. Maybe he will cease and desist from his otherwise destructive behavior. That's the advantage. As a light, if you're going to put this in a home defense POU, yeah, put it on. I like the tapering of the slide. Notice how it's kind of tapered on the top. Makes it even slimmer. No sharp edges around here. Again, it is mostly ambidextrous. Your slide release is right here, though, on the right-hand side. And I can't remember. I think I was using that a lot in drills. Just because. You know, I don't necessarily feel like I have to slingshot it every time. My hand's right there, dude. It's fast. Works great. Sights I've talked about. They are windage adjustable. I don't know. Actually, I take that back. I was going to say I don't know of any aftermarket sets. I think they take the same sights as the P99 PPQ series. I think. So if you can find ones for that, maybe swap them out. I just, I mean, am I clicking around? And I, maybe I missed it. I just did not see a lot of options. Again, Heine. You know, make those freaking straight eights or some of the really precise ones on there. I would just love it. 
three dot pattern no surprise there great gun oh by the way it has a red cocking indicator here you can also look down here there's a viewing port port in the chamber area big fat external extractor here I love the German stamping on the slides hey James Bond man this is your next gun right here dude your backup piece then a PPQ is primary that would be so cool alright how about fuel strip oh it's pretty simple let me see if I can do that maybe not stick it up oh no we gotta pull the trigger who cares <laughs> again guys make that's like the current group think oh you can't pull a trigger and they're actually engineering that out as we've talked about in some other designs like it's so evil safe direction pull the freaking trigger whoop de doo and then off it comes field strip complete nested recoil springs nothing new there we've seen it forever and this is honestly one of the the higher quality I don't know how to term this maybe combat ready subcompacts that came out this gun has been around a while you know the XGS definitely came out after it the shield came out after it this is kind of a standard setter. There's your slide rails. Maybe why it's so great in the accuracy department. And then putting it back together. Duh. Simple. Test fire. Well, you know, it's complete. I didn't take the spring apart. I didn't want to get all dirty. No puss, nothing. I know. Whatever. Oh, I was going to tell you something else. Oh, yeah. No magazine disconnect. I like that as well. Good job, Walther. This is such a great pistol. Accessories and versatility. Uh, this might be a downside. It's just, for whatever reason, the Walther PPS, and I hope this video changes it, a lot of people have overlooked it. And I think that's a mistake. Because if you're good with the firepower equation that this pistol, or for that matter, it's freaking counterparts because they're about the same. If you're happy with your firepower, you need to look at this gun. And the price, it's more expensive. German produced. The gun is amazing, but for whatever reason, I don't think it has sold like extraordinarily well, and therefore the aftermarket accessory department is very limited. Okay, for instance, I don't think there's any aftermarket magazines for this. You're going to have to buy Walther Factory, which means about 40 bucks per. I had to get these off eBay so we could shoot drills. I mean, I looked around, I was like, well, I need to get some PP, you know, PPS. You know, TMP bought this gun used off go gun broker, no less. I had to go to gun broker to find it. I couldn't find one local. It's like, I need to get a PPS shoot for TMP. Bang. Oh, I need magazines. Now we got to just spend another 80 bucks on mags. I prefer the seven rounder once again. Holsters. How do you carry your PPS? Most folks like inside the waistband, and I think that's a great carry option. If you, like most TMPers I meet out there, go around unprepared. <laughs> in their everyday carry system yeah you the guys I meet all the time they don't have the multi-tool well you don't need a multi-tool but light knife all that crap all they got is their gun and maybe a Swiss army knife but if you don't have a fanny pack like I do that's right I wear one deal with it you can wear this here's a, a holster which is excellent by Fox freaking bought this thing off Amazon and this one's a shield by everyday carry holsters also outstanding and we've been running these, and they're just both excellent. They're simple. They're a composite holster. You've seen them before. You know, partially kydex, partially leather, steel clips, adjustable for carry depth, slightly canted. This one is for actually an XDS. I mark it with a permanent marker, Sharpie, so I know. But it'll fit, X. It'll fit the PPS just fine. This is a great carry option. And then I don't have it on the table. They have an off-site magazine carrier. Dude, if you're going around with just six rounds or seven rounds, you need an extra mag. Just in case. If you're carrying a gun to make the decision, don't carry just six rounds. Come on now. Active shooter. Remember what we were talking about? You don't know what that guy has. You might save the day, yo. I love these holsters, though. They're excellent. There's a lot of other ones out there, too. Uh, I like these because they're high value and they work. And you're not getting rate and cost. So everyday carry holsters, just excellent. You can uh, carry a you know, shoulder holster. You know, guys know that's my preferred way to do it. I don't think they have, for instance, a Galco Classic Light for the Walther PPS. That too makes me sad. Hey, Galco, stepping on up, bro. Well, nothing we'd like to, but then there's just not that many Walther PPSs out there. Ugh, Newman. I knew they would say that. It's true. 
There's a lot of other carry options. Though. Other cool holsters. Can you go ankle? We talked about that. Sights, we talked about it. How about value? Uh, yeah, it's expensive, dude. I told you that demotivated me a bit way back in 2009. But can you say SIG 938? That's a, what, not, what, what is that, $725 gun? Now, if we rave about the SIG 938, why can't we rave about this? Well, it's polymer. It's not aluminum frame. Okay, I could see that. That's the second kind of cool thing. That's not a per performance issue. I mean, anybody who rolls in and goes, oh, you know, polymer gun sucks. I'm like, dude, you're talking at your butt. You don't know what you're talking about. Polymer guns are one of the most proven modern firearm designs out there. Glock. H and K. It's expensive, though. I don't know. What, about 700 I We got this used for substantially less. I think around 425 I don't even remember. But it was... I, it struck me as a good deal, and the dude had like freaking two mags with it. One's not on the table. In our drills, we need like four minimum for rounds. This you know rounds count this low, but there's so many options. I don't know if they're game changers. <laughs> How about the Car CW9 PM9 PM40? Awesome guns. We talked about the Shield. Oh, what a great gun! The Shield. All hail. The Smith & Wesson Shield. Get it in 40, get it in 9. Great, great gun. By the way, I put these uh, aftermarket decal. This isn't a decal grip. It's something else. And it sucks. Look at this. Peeling up. I haven't even shot it yet. Peeling up from the back. Hey, decal grip. We need it for the shield and we need it for every basically every pistol on this table. XDS, Walther PPS, the Trilogy. All of them need a decal grip. That, if you don't know what that is, that's something like this, but a lot higher quality. It comes in either rubber or skateboard t tape style. You can buy them at Brownells. They don't make them for these guns yet. They do, however, for other great competitive offerings like the Glock 2627. It's going to be a lot cheaper than the PPS and it holds more rounds and it's basically my everyday carry these days, the Glock 26. Packing 124 grain Golden Saber plus peas. Ruger LC9, I'm not a huge fan. Trigger just is atrocious. But it's reliable. Just hard to shoot. Sig 938, already talked about that. Kimber Solo, haven't reviewed that one. Don't know if I ever will. It's kind of a finicky feeder. Needs special ammunition. It's really expensive. Okay. We already said some expensive is okay. Remington R51. I'm going to call, call that gun the Area 51. It's kind of a, a different looking gun. Which I like. It's copying the old Remington Model 51. I think it's a 32 or 380. That gun could be excellent. Again, don't don't misread me. I'm just saying it's a. I don't know if it's a game changer. It's just, you know, Remington decided the Freedom Group said, "Hey, we want a piece of this concealed carry, you know, pie." Where you been, dudes? I mean, the PPS had this out years ago. I always like the "Hey, me too" attitude. I want to do it too. Well, you're late, dude. It's kind of like the Glock. Was it Model 42, the 380 just came out? I'm like, dude, that, that gun would have been awesome 10 years ago. I think 380s are on the, the downslope. Why? Because of these guns. I said that in my philosophy video, the 380 still sucks. And it does. In certain roles, it makes sense. But, dude, I can carry such a slim and compact gun like the, the Shield. Why, don't, why am I going to downgrade to a 380? Well, because in that fancy, I saw this James Bond movie. The guy, he was shooting it at 100 yards. He killed a bad guy at 400 yards with it. <laughs> That's why. Oh, the movies. Okay, why didn't you say so? Yeah, in that case, I guess the 380 rocks. No, it sucks. 380 sucks. 9 millimeter minimum. 40, I like the 9mm just for rounds, but the 40 is great. The 45 ACP, much better options. How about the Breda Nano? That's a competitive option. It's going to be much less expensive. I don't like it. But nothing. Doggone it. I have a Breda Nano and I love it. I sleep with it every night. It sings me to sleep every night. <laughs> okay, dude. Rock on. And I may change, but I just... A couple competitive options. The Walther PPS, though, is... It's as good as any of them. Maybe not in terms of firepower, especially going against G2627. But accuracy speed of firing man this thing's like a mini machine gun it's so fast when we ran this gun this is one of the most enjoyable pieces we ran everybody who shot 
the Walther PPS on the crew fell in love with it. And if you talk to someone who actually has trigger time on the Walther PPS, you will find that sentiment echoed. It's a Hall of Famer, hands down. 100% reliable, reliable, by the way, did I tell you that? Even when dropped in the snow, getting muddy, no jams at all. Jack and hollow points, nothing. 100% reliable. Now, I didn't like put a thousand rounds through it, but when we shot it, it was reliable. By the way, superb reports of this pistol by long-term users, 4,000 rounds or, or more. They're saying it's reliable as a stone fence. And if you ask people in England, that's pretty darn reliable, dude. I told you we're going to have fun with this review. It's got kind of a complex floor plate. That may pose a problem, like I said, if you're dropping it on concrete. But the gun is put together. It's well thought out. It's got a big honking extractor. I just don't see any reliability problems. It's uh, basically melanite coated, if I'm not mistaken, on a stainless steel slide. No rust problems. You know, the back strap, some guys may be worried about that. Hey, it disables the gun. Is it going to come loose? I never saw it. No problems. I would say the track record is going to be near perfection for the Walther PPS. And therefore, it enters into some pretty special company into my playlist. The Shield. The XDS. The Car. PM9. PM40. The Glocks. These are great days to be armed. Concealed carry permit holder. Responsible civilians for Constitution law enforcement. I love the Walther PPS. That is my updated review. And I got to tell you, dudes, it feels good to get it done and to give this gun the attention and testing that it deserved to prove the point that, yes, even back in 2009, when I said it, total win, this gun. Thanks for watching. See ya.